Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry, and if you're new here, I am a full-time environmental scientist with also a side passion to uh, refurbish and reuse secondhand items that I find. And so this piece that I'm going to be working on, I think for the next two weeks, um, is this uh, sideboard piece. Um, and so I found this piece on the side of the curb on the day of um, garbage day. <laughs> Mickey, do you see that? Oh, we gonna steal, steal this. <laughs> oh, I'm excited, steal. Let's go. <laughs> I just was really interested in like the like cane webbing that was on it because it's really trendy right now but a lot of times people have to like cut out the furniture door and like staple on the cane cane webbing but this already comes with it and I so I thought this would be a really good furniture flip so me and my roommate um, grabbed it and we brought it home and I think I'm gonna start working on it this week and next week my latest endeavor and goal right now is something called flip for Japan and I'm gonna flip furniture to raise enough money to um, pay for a trip for myself and my parents so that we can go see my sister in Japan. That is where she lives and we can have a little family reunion because we just haven't seen each other since COVID has started and it's been a really hard year for I think my family and for all of us. So if you're not subscribed, make sure to hit that bell button subscribe because I'm going to be releasing furniture flipping videos as much as I can. But yeah, I'm really excited about this piece and I hope you enjoy this week's, this week's video. So this is what it looked like um, before I did anything to it. It's actually in really good shape. I was so surprised someone was giving it away or throwing it out to be honest. Yeah, as you can see, it has three shelves inside and a little drawer. Um, the back is a bit loose, so I do need to staple that down, um, as well as the cane part attached to doors needs to be stapled down. But really, other than that, it's structurally sound and I just need to fix it up and paint it. Oh yeah, and I forgot. It's kind of missing some chips in the corner, so um, I had to just figure out a way to fill those big chips in. So as you can see, there's another one on this side. You'll see later on the video how I did that. But to start, I use my uh, TSP as per usual um, to clean out the furniture and this is just mainly to get out all that dust and grease and grime that has been accumulating on the piece for for years and you really want to do this if you want to paint your furniture because it helps remove the grease so that the paint will stick to the actual furniture itself instead of the grease and in the long run it'll make it last a lot longer and not to mention, if someone wants to buy this, I wouldn't feel comfortable giving them a dirty piece of furniture. I'd want them to have something that's like new and yeah, just clean. Next I took off all of the hinges and hardware um, so that they won't get painted over. Save it for later.
just got back from Home Depot, purchased us that guy and some staples. Total was $77. Now I know that's kind of a bit of money for one project, but my thinking is that I'll use this for more and more projects as I get more and more furniture and hopefully can sell those for a profit and it'll pay itself off. So now I'm gonna go to Canadian Tire and try to find something called Bondo, which is what um, people use to fill in like dents for their car. Um, and I've seen it a lot in other furniture flipping people um, accounts where they use Bondo to fix really big chips um, in furniture and it makes it super, super durable. So I'm gonna go out and try to find some. So I'm sure Canadian Tire has some. It's Saturday and I'm sure Canadian Tire's gonna be super crazy, so Pray for me. <laughs> so just finished up at Canadian Tire. I was just in and out because I didn't want to be with all the crowds. But I ended up finding this Bondo thing. It was only $17 or for a pretty big can. Um, so I'm gonna try it out, gonna go home and see if it works its magic like everybody claims on the internet. Everyone in the furniture or finishing world that is, maybe not all all of the interwebs but yeah let's go home so here i am i made it home and i'm gonna try out this product for the first time so the instructions say to mix up the stuff in the can really well and put a pea-sized amount of hardener in which is like this pink um cream in this tube here um and this is supposed to make the stuff harden within like 10 20 minutes so you're not really supposed to put a lot in or else it'll harden too fast so you can't work with it so it's kind of experimenting with this and it was kind of fun but the advantage of using bondo which is what i really liked is that it dries really fast so if you do use wood filler like and it's for big chunks like this um, they do recommend that you wait over eight hours for it to fully dry before you sand it down but for Bondo, you can wait just 10 to 20 minutes depending on what kind of solution you've mixed and it's ready to be sanded down. So it's a lot faster if you're on a kind of a time crunch or if you're just impatient like me. Guys, uh, it's my first time using a stapler and I know it's like not that big of an achievement but I was kind of intimidated by it. I don't know why, but this is actually so easy to use. It's just, you gotta lean into it a bit and you pull the trigger. And it made the back so much more secure. And when I was done with stapling, I just felt so good and just so cool to see the furniture just kind of shaping back into to what its former glory was. So yeah, nerding out a little bit here. So after waiting 10-20 minutes, I took out my Black & Decker detail sander and just sanded out the Bondo in the general shape I wanted and then after I just used sandpaper and did it by hand to just kind of refine and get it smooth into the right shape that I wanted. Good morning, how are you guys doing? I was so tired last night, oh my goodness, but here we are. 
So where did we leave off? So we, um, I applied the Bondo to the, to the chips of the furniture and I also used a little bit of wood filler and I let it sit overnight because the wood filler takes a little bit of time to, um, to harden, whereas Bondo takes like 20 minutes. Um, but I used some wood filler, so I'll show you how it looks right now. So there it is, like this white stuff is the Bondo, this yellow stuff is the wood filler. So I applied the Bondo, sanded it down, but I still had some like gaps missing. So I just, instead of mixing new stuff, I just filled it in with wood filler. Um, so that's one corner. Then this corner was also pretty bad. And then this one had a little bit of chip. So we're gonna sand this down and make it super smooth and continue on with the project. And this is what the sideboard is starting to look like. Not gonna lie, I was pretty nervous about taking on this piece, but I'm just so happy I did because so far it's turning out with the wood filling and the stapling. I didn't know how it would work, I guess, for me. I don't know, guys. Getting out of my comfort zone, right, is kind of scary always. But I'm so happy. This is how the corners look, and of course I'll paint it over so it's not so obvious. Next, I am prepping the piece for painting, and I do find that this stage, although it's kind of tedious taping everything off, it makes a difference in the end product. Crisp Lines, guys, is like, it's just so much of a nicer end product. And so if you guys want to finish your furniture, I highly, highly recommend just putting a little bit of extra effort in taping off the edges. It makes such a difference in the end. And I wanted to keep the inside of the piece the original color, so I just used a garbage bag and taped it to protect the inside. Alright, so I'm using this can of black match spray paint made by Rust-Oleum and I'm so excited because I've actually bought this probably a year or two ago and it's just been sitting in my basement so I think it's about time it's used for its purpose anyways my plan for this is to spray the body black and keep the doors the original color so that there's kind of a dramatic contrast. So I needed to just put about two layers of paint on just to fully cover the wood underneath and give it a really rich dark color. Hey guys, okay, quick update. So when I was spraying the um, sideboard credenza I don't really know what to call this um, I ran out so I didn't finish the top um, so I went to the store to try to find some and I couldn't find the same brand like I bought that can probably two maybe a year ago and I just never ended up using it um, so I just wonder if like maybe Rust-Oleum isn't making that color and that same kind of type of paint that I wanted. So I had to go and buy a different one. So I still bought like a Rust-Oleum um, 
painter's touch spray paint so hopefully it's the same type of black i chose a matte black to match like the other one i had um so i'm just gonna spray this on right now just to try to finish up the color so let's see how it turns out i guess And this is what it looked like after it was fully painted. And I don't know about you, but I'm obsessed and totally in love with how it came out. And now please enjoy the most relaxing part of this video, me peeling tape. Then I applied um, Rust-Oleum's top coat using this sponge from Country Chic Paint and I put a even layer of top coat all around the body just so it gives it a little bit extra durability and the paint doesn't chip as easily. And the final step was to put these doors back on. And I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> I was struggling. I did the other door first and I didn't record it because I was, I, I ended up putting the hinge on like backwards. Anyways, it was, it was a thing. And the last and final step is to celebrate. So now is my favorite part of the video when I do the grand reveal. This is what it looked like beforehand. It was broken and chipped and needed a little bit of repair. Here she is. She's here for the drama. I am here for it. It's bold, the contrasting colors. Like, I, I'm just so proud of how this turned out. One of my favorite parts, of course, is the cane webbing. And I'm so happy that I was able to keep the doors in the original condition because it kind of pays homage to the original creator of this piece and I just wanted to be able to preserve the heritage of it. And so, of course, I also kept the inside the same color and I just love it. Look at it, it's, I'm so proud of it. Of me. <laughs> this is my first time doing this kind of furniture piece. I've only done dressers and a table before. Um, and I love how this one turned out. I love the more like modern feel to it. It looks so cute and I hope someone out there loves it as much as I do. I'm gonna put it up for sale on Facebook Marketplace and see if there's any interest if no one wants it then maybe we'll just keep it for our own living room and either way it's a win-win i just am so happy about it and what i love about this piece too is that like someone was gonna throw this out and i'm just having so much fun painting furniture guys <laughs> it's so funny hey messy should we tell them how much profit we made yeah okay let's tell <laughs> Um, I posted the cane webbing sideboard on Facebook Marketplace and it had so many hits. I had probably, um, I had it up for about 
48 hours. And within that time, I had about 250 people see it, six people saved it, um, and quite a few people also shared it. And then I had a few people message me, and in the end, I was able to sell it to a, a really nice couple um, that have an Airbnb in Prince Edward County here in Ontario. And the cane sideboard's gonna actually go into their unit that they live in, not the Airbnb unit, but I'm so happy that they loved it just so much. Okay, so here are the numbers for this piece. So I got the actual sideboard for $0, picked it up on the side of the road. Um, I had to buy a, a few tools and get a few different um, materials to fix it up. So I think total I put in around $100 and I sold it on Facebook Marketplace for $550 and that left us with a total profit of $450 guys. I can't believe it. I never thought that I could do it. I don't know, I just never thought I could make money without working a salary job or an hourly job. Guys, I'm just like really encouraged that someone liked my work and I just wanna keep on doing this. It's super fun, guys. You should try it, honestly. It is super fun and a good way to make a little bit of extra money. Anyways, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. I'll see you soon. Bye. Also, guys, it is so hot today. Like, I am sweating. My hair was curled, but now it's going straight because of all my sweat. So, needless to say, for the rest of the day, I'm probably going to just cool down and not be in the sun. Um, yeah. So... <laughs> Guys, stay cool, stay hydrated for the rest of your summer. I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>